It's me, Margaret, and I'm coming to you with the most requested video that I've ever had, and that is fingerless gloves on the Addy, the Addy Express knitting machine. I've come up with two versions. Um, one I'm going to call the beginner version, and it's strictly, but dif the difference is, is the bind offs here in the thumb. The other one is, gonna, is called the advanced version, and it can be a little tricky. Now, I'm still not super pleased with, with either of these. This one is a very poorly bound off knitting <laughs> ribbing here. But remember, I'm new to needle knitting. So this was just to represent it for those of you who can do better. And uh, this one is done with crochet edging, which is much more in my skill set right now. And one of the best things about our yarn community is we have more than just two heads to put together for ideas. I'm thinking that with this advanced version that we could actually crochet easier around here to bring a thumb up. You know, you would add the crochet and then you could pick up with knitting needles if you needed to, but um, I don't know how you'd pick it up with knitting needles neatly with this kind of bind off. But anyway, my point being is that if you have an idea, share it with me on how we can improve these. But in the meantime, they'll get the job done. I want to thank Laverne Blair for this basic pattern. She had posted this on the uh, Facebook group, Addie King Loomers and Knits, and I took it and tweaked it a little bit. I had added some extra yarn so that you could do the um, ribbing or the finishing for the top and the bottom. And then I changed things a little bit for the advanced one to finish off the thumb in a different way. So uh, thanks Laverne and let's get started. Now let's have a word about sizing. Okay, you can see how this fits on me. This is two rows of crochet on this side and I did three rows of very poorly done ribbing with a bind off edge would be the fourth I guess. Do you count that? I don't even know if you count that. Okay, but my hand size is basically a medium. However, if you measure it for fine gloves, it's called a medium large. So that lets you know in case you're wondering. Um, here are some measurements if you want to put your hand down like this and then trace over it. That would be the most consistent way I think for us to measure. These are the measurements that I got. So from the tip of my finger down to my wrist right here is 11 and a half inches. So that tells you how big my hand is. Now if you're going to measure for some fine gloves, they tell you to get a measuring tape and measure all the way around your hand, right about here. But you have to be careful when you do that because if you cup your hand, you're going to get an inconsistent or inaccurate measurement. So you have to keep your hand flat when you do it. And mine, well, see I didn't do it. Mine hand when flat is about seven and a quarter inches, which is what I measure here, or 19 centimeters. So that gives you an idea of about what my hand size is. If you have larger or wider hands than mine, then I think it, put, it stretches pretty well for this 22 needle. Um, or of course you could use um, the larger Addy, do flat panels and seam them up, which would probably be even easier because for the thumb you would just seam here and up here and leave it open. So that would be pretty handy dandy. Okay, look at our instructions here and it says step one, begin with your cast on with waist yarn at the first black needle that arrives at the yarn feeder. Okie dokie, here's the yarn feeder. We got white up. We crank around until we get the first black needle, which is that one. Okay. 
Now, I am assuming you know how to cast on, because this would not be, whoops, already messed up. Make sure it catches. This would not be a good first project for anyone with their new Addy. I would suggest you do a hat right out of the box. Put in the arm feeder and hang on to that tail till you're sure it catches. There we go. All right. Complete five rounds of waste yarn. Now, five is an arbitrary number. Some people do it with two or three. I usually like five. <clears throat> I happen to know that I'm using some recycled yarn that will only do four rounds. So I will stop at four. See how short that is? Okay. Pull several yards of your main color and drop into the center of the addy. Remove waste yarn from the feeder, replace with the main yarn at the beginning of the black needle. This is just like changing colors except for the fact that you're going to pull several yards of your main color and drop it into the center of the addy. And the reason why is you'll later use the extra yarn to hand knit or crochet or ribbing or edging for the cuff. Alright, so I am using Vanna's Choice Purple and I'm going to measure yards by holding it to my nose and extending out my left hand and that is roughly a yard. So that's one, two, three, we'll call four. I don't know. It says several yards. I don't really know how long we need. Okay, and just like changing colors, we'll replace in the yarn feeder. And I always like to hang on to the yarn until it catches. Now when I change colors, at some point I like to tie them together. Now I'm doing this early on and I'm not doing it tightly because this is waste yarn and we're going to want to remove it. So one little knot's going to suffice. Okay, step four says complete 30 rounds. But it goes on to say, I should have written this up here, at the end of 30th round, stop before you get to the black needles. All right, so let's do 30 rounds. Two, three, yay. Nine. And now I'm watching where are those black needles because I want to stop right before, right there. Okay, we'll go ahead and let the white catch the uh, yarn right there. So what is it telling us at five? Stop before the black needles. Cut the yarn at about two feet and thread it through the three stitches on the back needles and remove them, just like casting off. You'll use the extra yarn to bind off the thumb opening later. Okie dokie. So I'm going to stretch out my yarn here. You can't see it because it's out of the shot, but I'm going to do approximately two feet. Then, because it's just like casting off, I'm going to use my yarn needle. Thread it through. Release it from the yarn feeder. Now, it's the three black needles that we want to cast off, so I'm leaving my white needle alone, making sure that that catches. And when that needle pops down, I can bind it off, so I grab it. Okay, then I wait for the next one to pop down, and I grab it. Don't pull these too tightly. And then I wait for that one to get out of the way. And I grab that one. Okay. Then it says, put a new yarn tail in at the first white needle, just like changing colors and adding new yarn, and load and close the yarn feeder. All right. so. We will do just like changing colors. I'm going to 
wrong way. Pull this extra yarn off, drop it out of the way, and get some more yarn. Now, I guess at this point, if you wanted to do um, a new color, you could, but I'm not going to. Okay, I am going to gently, carefully go backwards because I want that yarn to get the new yarn, I mean that needle to get the new yarn. So I catch it in there, put it into the yarn feeder, hold on, and continue on. Okay, it's got, what does it say? Close the feeder, proceed around slowly, and stop at the first black needle. Okay. So we're going to proceed around slowly, making sure they all catch. Get back out of the way. And looking for the first black needle. Aha! I see it. We don't want to knit it. But what do we do want to do? Step 8. Remove yarn from yarn feeder and take it behind the first black needle, in front and under the hook of the second black needle, and behind the third black needle, just like normal cast on. Then back into the yarn feeder. So pretty much, we have to recast on. See, we've taken it off of the three black needles. So we have to recast on. So we hook it under here, go behind this one, hook it under here, and then let's push, make sure you get the white loop pushed down there. Put it back into the yarn feeder is what we did back in the yarn beater and step nine complete 15 more rounds of main color then switch to waist yarn but do not cut the main yarn just toss the ball in the center of the addy you'll retrieve it later to hand knit or crochet a ribbing or edging over the knuckles now this is important depending on the size of your hand 15 may be too long if you're adding an edging and it is too long for my hand my size medium hand so I'm going to stop mine at about five rounds and then put on my waist yarn okay so and I like to go very carefully when I come back around here to these newly Cast on stitches, make sure everything clicked, which it did. So that was one round. Two rounds. Three rounds. Four. Five. You know, that doesn't look like it's going to be tough enough. I'm going to do six. I'm going to do seven. Okay. Now, after you complete your desired number, do not cut the main yarn. Just toss it into the center of the addy. And we have to do waist yarn. Now, here is the deal. With the small addy, the addy professional, it's, there's not a large opening. So if you have a large ball, it's not going to go through the middle and you'll just have to put it across the back out of the way and keep lifting this up so that you don't accidentally catch it. But now that I have just a little bit left, I can stick that in there out of the way. Okay, so now this yarn, whoops, I don't want it on the black needle, do I? This yarn is now going to stay out of the way of my waist yarn. This is recycled waist yarn. I'm going to pull it out. And we treat it the exact same way as changing color. Now, notice that I have it on this white one. I don't have it on the black, so I'll be sure to catch that. And then I hold them together. Make sure they catch. And then I just lo loosely tie them together. And I'll just, since this is recycled, I'll just finish this off for however many rows it gives me. And here's the best part about casting off with waste yarn is that you just keep going. 
Just let it go. And you keep going a couple of times until it just lets go. Now look, these last three are hanging. Oh, these last four are hanging on. So I'll just gently pull those off. Now remember you have live stitches here, so you don't want to yank this or everything will come undone. And you remove it from the machine. Now you're ready to either pick up these stitches right here with knitting needles or crochet and edging to finish that off. And you'll see right here is how your thumb fits in. Well, I got these loose yarn threads, but you'll see right there. So this ends here, right here. So I want to do a few more rows to get it up to my knuckles, which is a good place for me to stop. So I stopped at what, seven, I think it was, which was good for me. Now, you can finish this if you want to with a crochet edging. I don't think you could do a knit edging very easily on that. I found that extremely difficult to do. It didn't look right to me at all. So I've got a more advanced tutorial for finishing it on the Addy. We'll do, instead of just regular bind off and regular cast on at this point, what we'll do is a crochet cast off and a crochet cast on, and it gives you chains around this right here. So um, yeah, so that's all there is to that, except for putting your edging on and removing your waist yarn. And it seems I totally forgot to show you how to tighten up that thumb opening. Remember you have two strings hanging on the inside and you just give those a little tug, uh, probably knot them and then sew them in and you have a much more finished, properly sized opening. All right, so I got myself organized here. This is the top where the knuckle ribbing will go, and of course at the bottom where the wrist ribbing will go. So we want to pick it up and put it on our needles. Now, because you're doing one by one ribbing, it's not going to matter if you knit with this being your outside or that being your outside. It just doesn't make any difference. You have 22 needles, so you'll have 22 stitches on your the. Uh, hand knitting needles. So you can only do a one by one ribbing to make it come out even. So I'm going to pick mine up. I mean, if you feel like you really need to knit with the right side on the outside, then you would pick it up, you know, one leg at a time. You can see the stitch right here. You pick up one leg and go around like this. Me, I find it much easier to work from the inside which is why I didn't press this flat to make it easy for you. I mean, to stay out of the way because it's easier when it flips around so you can see it. All right, now here's where our working yarn ends and it's actually, this stitch right here is a combination of waist yarn and main color yarn. So I don't like to work in that stitch. I like to go to the previous row right here and call that my first one. And see how much easier it is to see where to pick up when you work from the inside. So you do this until you've got 22 stitches on your needles. And then depending upon whether you are magic looping or double pointing, you divide those as evenly as possible um, on, around your needles. And you continue on with your run by run ribbing, binding off with your favorite stretchy bind off, and you're finished. Now for a crochet bind off, the same holds true. Um, you can look at this outside and see that last stitch going behind your waist yarn and you can pick up one stitch at a time. I find that more difficult to do, so I like to do mine from the inside. And to me it doesn't make any difference. A single crochet I think looks great on both sides of the fabric. As I just pointed out in the knitting version, your last stitch 
is a combination of main color yarn and waste yarn. And that's confusing, so I don't like to start with that. I like to move up to this one right here. Now, your, what size crochet hook? I'm using a USI or a 5.5 millimeter. Again, that's going to be your personal preference. It depends on how loose you crochet um, or tightly and what you prefer. So you may have to experiment. And of course, crocheting it's so easy because if you don't like it, you just rip back out. Just don't remove your waist yarn until you're completely finished. So what we do here is I'm going to do at least one row of single crochet. That's really the what I prefer is to put a base. So what I'm going to do is go in right here and pull up a loop. Okay, so that's my starting point right there. And then I'm going to do a single crochet in the next one, and the next one, and I'm going to continue on in this fashion. Now, if you want to, you can continue doing a spiral single crochet all the way around. Or you can switch to a front post, back post, double crochet to have more of a ribbing effect. The choice is up to you. Mm -hmm.